Um, so, when doing a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, where they do not give you a formula, the best thing I want you guys to do, just like when we had the parabolas and they gave us information, the best thing I would ask you guys to do is just take a little separate sheet and just plot what information we have. So, it's just giving us points, right? We need to obviously understand what those points are. Well, let's just go and plot them. So, we say vertices are at 0, 2 and, and at 4, 2. Then we have the endpoints on the minor axis are at 2, 3, and at 2, 1. Okay, so remember, ladies and gentlemen, there's two types of verse, or two types of ellipses we have. We have a horizontal ellipse and our vertical ellipse. Remember that the larger length is what we call the major axis. So we're given and what's at the end of our major axis is what we call our vertices. So here are our two vertices, right? That's our endpoint. The vertices are at 0, 2, and 4, 2. So if I had a parabola that's horizontal, your vertices would look like this. And if it was vertical, the vertices would look like this. So just by giving you that information applied in those points, what type of ellipse do you think we have? A hor one with a major axis symmetry that's horizontal, or a major axis with horizontal, or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal, horizontal right? So automatically, now that we know that it's horizontal, let's go and write out the formula for it. Because they're asking us to find the standard form of the equation. So we have x minus h squared, since it's horizontal, a squared, it's going to be below it, plus x minus k, or sorry, y minus k. So if it's horizontal, you use that equation? Yes. If you have a major axis, it's horizontal. Okay, so we have that. Wait, what about the major axis? The major axis, which is your a, this right here. Okay. If it's horizontal, then that's the one you use. If it was vertical, then your a and b would be swapped. Oh. All right. So, do we know what a is, or at least what a squared is? Well, remember, a, ladies and gentlemen, is this distance. Since we're not dealing with the vertical, we can erase this. Remember, this distance from the center to the vertice is what we call a. And notice, this is also a. So, what is this distance? which is this total distance here, because that total distance is going to be what? 2a. So let's count. We can just simply just count what is the distance between our two vertices. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we could say 2a is equal to 4. So therefore, a equals 2. Right? And therefore, we could say a squared equals 4. And then the, what's important about that is if I know that a is 2, that means if I go to a vertice, if I travel 2 units, where do I go to? The center. The center, which is going to be right around there. <laughs> All right? Not yet. Um, but let's actually I graph. said the vertices was the, the ones beyond the vertices. Let's graph this a little bit larger. So now we're given also the distance of B. So remember from this point, from your minor axis, from here to here is B, and from here to here is B. So therefore the total distance of the minor axis is what? 2B. So let's count how far, how long is this distance? 1, 2. So we could say 2B is equal to 2. Therefore, B equals 1. And we can say b squared equals 1. Yes? No? Maybe? So? <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. So I guess you could say b squared is equal to 1. All right? Can you do b again? So we figured out a was distance from here, from here to here, right? B is the distance from here to here, the minor axis. 
so B is on your minor axis. If A is from here to here, B is from here to here. So B is the minor axis, the smaller axis. Okay? So since from here to here, here to here is 1, and from here to here is 1, so therefore we can say 2B, which is double the distance, is equal to 2, so therefore B equals 1. Um, so now we have a point for our center. So now we can say we know B squared is 1, A squared is 4, and we can say now our center is 1, 2, 2, at 2 comma 2. So we know center is 2 comma 2, B squared equals 1, A squared equals 4, and do we need to figure out what C, what C is, where the foci are? They're just asking us to find the standard equation. Do we care? Do we need to know what C is right now? No. no. If they ask us what's the foci, then yeah, we had to figure out what C is. But we don't need to figure C. We already have all the information we need to create a formula. Now, I'll just ask this question one more time because I always like to see or the answer make sure everybody understands it. Why don't I need to figure out what X and Y are? I figured out what H, K, A, and B are. Why do I not need to figure out what X and Y are? Not they zero don't yet. Have a the yes, they are variables. X and what do X and Y represent? X and Y. Oh, intercepts. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, X and Y, ladies and gentlemen, represent all the points on the ellipse, right? How many points are there on the ellipse? Infinite, Infinite many, right? How many centers are there? One. How many vertices are there? Two. Two. Two, right? So those are those are finite points, but x and y is infinite, right? So that we're not that's why we're not solving for an x and y point. Those are just given into your formula. So therefore, let's just plug it in. So we have our center, so it's going to be x minus two squared over a squared, which is four, plus x minus two squared over one which we don't really need to write, but I guess I will, equals 1. Okay. And that's it. So what you guys are going to do for number um, 29 through 47 for that homework,